Hello, everybody. Welcome to your weekly Q&A. I just finished a two-hour live stream. Well, it wasn't live, pre-recorded. Into quantum fitness, uh, fitness. I'm having the most fun ever. Being able to put all my bodies of work together in, in like one place. It's like... Uh, it's so fulfilling that I'm actually like ha enjoying writing this this book right now. Like I'm I'm writing it in the form of like diagrams, so it's like very child friendly and it's um so fun. So yeah, and again, remember everyone's saying, "How do I get from here to here? Here, here. The body is the bridge." Okay, so if you guys are still here and your body's here, which means that you are visionary, genius, not living how you want. We got to connect those two together. This is where we are this year is the kind of reconciliation of the, the body versus the, the, the conscious you, the conscious you, the unconscious you. Right. Okay. So, all right, we're knee deep in, in quantum fitness right now and we're having so much fun. So, okay, let's see where we are for our question and answers. Looks like we have about four good ones here. Okay, first question, Dermot. Ooh, I'm so happy you're in fitness. I'm so happy. I think you're all like our one dude that's in there, but hey, you're man enough to handle all those crazy women for sure. So let's see, Dermot. Um, hi, Jess. I have just trained in a new system using muscle testing in to diagnose issues within myself or clients. I have had some amazing results and I feel the positive shift starting with my work. However, I have heard that muscle testing can be inaccurate and it's leaving me a little in doubt over my new modality. This is giving me resistance to move forward with it as a healing system. Your opinion is always perspective created and so appreciated. Thank you. Ooh, ouchie. Okay, I'm actually going to cover this in quantum fitness because it's important. Now, I am going to spend some time with this one because why not, right? Okay, we have an hour. So, muscle testing. So, like, the mind is the biography of your body. All right. Now, the mind is usually run into until the um, the wounding and trauma heals. The mind is kind of like the ego, right? And then the body is like the inner child, and and then the the I am the awareness of spirit consciousness energy vibration is the I am, right? Or the third eye, or however you want to say it. But within within the construct of healing modalities, you have to understand that that it's just like. Have you ever heard a child speak, but it was their parents' words, right? Have you ever seen, um, you know, like, um, like, you know, someone who didn't believe in God, right? It's like, you remember that belief systems trump uh, truth because belief systems be the lie creates and generates reality. So when we're looking at everything holographically versus solid, we could say, oh, I'm muscle testing because the little child in there is going to be like, ding, ding, ding. Ego is my warden and and like, get me out of here. You know, like, yes, I'm allergic to that. Right. So that would be like, like muscle testing as in the, in the premise that the body is going to respond in a way that's going to tell us the truth about what we need, want or lacking, blah, blah, blah. Like, am I allergic to this? Like, now let me, I, I have, I'm going to play devil's advocate here because again, we're, we're playing in the, in the fields of duality, which means that there is a positive aspect and there's a negative aspect to every modality that is not inclusive of understanding the me, myself, and I. Now, does muscle testing take into consideration a manipulative a manipulative survival mechanism. Does it? Because if there's a child there, right? The child who has been programmed and programmed and programmed and programmed will sound a parrot of the mind, right? So like I watched Luke go through this. It's like when he was a baby, I could muscle test him because it was a, a genuine pure response. When his ego began to solidify into his body around eight this year, 
The muscle testing is lying now. How is that? Well, we go from who's driving the vehicle, right? The body is that neutrality space of, of master servant. It is whoever is like, if my dad's not here, the answer is going to be different. If my mom's here, the answer is going to be different, right? So a baby that is an automatic response system connected more towards higher levels of consciousness is going to respond very accurately to the truth of the higher version. Now, the ego, if the ego or the, the unconscious presence has dominated the field and the body through extensive survival programs and chronic fight or flight disassociation, the needs of the body are not going to be accurate. I mean, I literally just wrote this worksheet today and here's why. Because when the body is under too much stress or duress, whether it's physically, emotionally, or chemically, right? Stressful environment, stressful foods, stressful, you know, situation, you're, you're going to be running way more stress hormones through your body constantly, right? It's going to be kind of this, this adrenaline, cortisol, hopefully cannabinoid receptors are going to be activating there. Um, you're, you're going to be going through this system, which, which creates all of the energy of the body to be used and expended to protect self, anticipate, fight, flight, freeze. Now, it doesn't end there with a human because residue of thought can turn into heavier problem, right? So it's like, so say someone just like example. So someone's walking down the street, okay? And they bump into you. I mean, it's just like no big deal, right? If it seems random, okay? And but it does stimulate a little nervous system, boop. Like, whoa, you feel like very like, hey, you violated my personal space here. I feel threatened. Like, what's up with you, man? Or, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. You know, you, you either apologize for their, their, their stuff or you, uh, you know, go into attack, right? So then it's like, then no, notice that all of a sudden, you know, a few steps later, you're like, something's not right here. And you look down and your wallet's gone, right? So not only were you like confused and triggered, now your safety is like, you're very confused because now your wallet's gone. Did this guy take your wallet? Did you lose it at last door? Did you lose it over here? So now imagine what is happening biologically and chemically. Okay. So it's like fight, flight, freeze. You can't really do either of them because you're, you, you having to use all of your precious ADD to figure out where you've been, what you're doing. What's, and while you're doing this, you're wondering if this guy now knows where you live, right? You got to stop, call your credit cards, right? So you are literally in a survival mechanism program. And this is going to, this has nothing to do with muscle testing, but this is what it has to do with. This is going to require all of the body's sugar. Okay. Every ounce of it, every drop. And then some, once it eats all the, sh it, once it uses all the sugar, it's going to be like, what else can I use? Okay. Minerals right? Vital minerals, vital nutrients. And if I run out of those, I'll start pulling sugar from the brain. I'll start pulling sugar from the organs. I'll start pulling sugar from wherever I need it. I am going to get my sugar in order to stay in this problem. Okay. So you have all the energy that you need to freak out as much as you can, because the body has created reserves through your last abundance of addiction or sugar processing. Okay. Now what this does is it just weakens our immunity. It zaps digestion. It weakens the bones. It's, so it solidifies our organs, like especially kidneys, pancreas, liver. Okay. So, and gallbladder, those are going to be the ones that are like, now, it, what it also does to the brain is it it once it uses everything that it possibly can use as far as sugars, minerals, vitamins, anything with protein in it, it's going to go now search in a fat cell. Okay, so let's say say you know you see a dog and you're like, why are you eating vomit? Ugh. Or you see a dog eating something that it shouldn't. It's like because there's traces of food, right? So the so the body has 
extended so much survival energy of adrenaline. Like you're, you know, you're driving, when you drive 150 miles an hour, you're using more gas and you're going to get it from somewhere. Okay. So the body will then tap into its own brain because again, the brain has lots of fat, lots of minerals, lots of port, port, uh, protein storages, and the brain is also breathing, the lungs do too. So it's like everything starts to get a little bit harder, heavier, contracted, weak. Okay. So again, now I am weak, but when I eat sugar or am in love with a twin flame or studying meditation or in meditation, I feel strong. It's the it's the physical or it's the, um, sorry, it's the etherical expression of strength, right? So the body is like, you know, depleted from its own fat and mineral storages and nutrition. But once nutrition is depleted from the body, because nutrition is information, okay? Minerals have conversations. Vitamins have conversations, right? And so when that's all gone, right? It's like the brain is like 911 glucose. Give it to me now, right? It doesn't understand that it's dehydrated. The minerals are zapped. Like there's, there's, you know, no magnesium, like the bones are like becoming brittle, like we're losing hair, like we're going through these experiences because we're living in a chronic state of 911 and we don't have time to, like repopulate the the well right because again to get a body fully neutralized again and nu nutrient dense the body knows that takes time right to fill your mineral storages back up to fill your cannabinoid system receptors back up to fill you know all these things back up it's going to be required to um take time and some of you know what I mean. I don't have time. Instant gratification. I need this now is what the brain is saying. The body's starving. Great. Instant gratification, sugar, right? Whatever. Drugs, stimulants, alcohols, people, places, things. Whatever you're extracting dopamine from. Because again, you can get dopamine Maybe brownie is not your choice. Maybe that person is your choice because you can get, create dopamine from the feeling or anticipation of relief and reward. That's what creates sugar in the body. It's never about food. It's about dopamine being created in the brain. Crazy. I don't need food. But of course, that's what my body's going to go to if people aren't safe. Okay. Okay. So now I'm trying to hydrate, trying to do all these things, but the instant gratification behind it is I need 911, starvation, lack, blah, blah, blah. Now, if you've ever been around a desperate person, can you trust them? Can you? No. <laughs> and it's really like, you don't even take it personally. You're just like, you know, you can't trust them. Like when they come over, you cannot trust them. So unfortunately, it depends on what and who you are muscle testing. Now, you are a very powerful practitioner who has lots of intuition, so I'm not too worried about you. But this should be one tool in your toolbox, not the tool, because again, you have a direct connection with this body, and after quantum fitness, you are gonna be a grief expert, you're gonna have, you're gonna be grief certified. Like you're gonna know what the body is actually doing, even if it's giving you a response that says yes. Okay, you're going to be so aware, you're going to be able to use muscle testing, even if the answer you get is different from what the question is, because the thing is, is with manipulation and um, uh, desperation is usually always yes, yes, yes. It's like over promise, under deliver. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Words don't match actions. So what I would recommend that you do is 
anybody that you're working with is is really do kind of like what a body scan on them. And this isn't a judgment. This is just this is just like a check in point, because obviously, if they're coming for you for energetic healing or physical healing or emotional healing, they are not just emotion. They are not just physical. They are not just chemical. They are a system. And if their survival is in um, in danger, they will lie, lie, cheat and steal from you without even considering it personally. It's like, it's not personal. I just needed what I needed. Kids do it all the time. I've watched them and it isn't coming from a manipulative, like, like criminal space, but it is coming from a starvation need place. And most people that are very, very ill have been doing this to their bodies for so long that not only is the sugars, the minerals, the, the, you know, essentials been completely zapped, the, the organs are hardened, the bones are brittle, you know, they're disassociated in meditation half of the day and they're chronically sick because now the immune system that's like, like immune system needs energy too, right? Not just your adrenaline rush of your figuring out who stole your car, like, your immunity is an army that is literally on alert constantly and and deals with every trigger, not just poisonous food. It deals with emotional enemies, physical enemies, chemical enemies. So if you eat an apple that has a slight trace of something on it, right? It's like all systems go, right? Well, what if there's nothing there? There's no one there to really allow the army to be sustained. Because if I left an army out with no supplies, eventually they would have to turn on themselves and for their own survival. It's like a cannibalism at, at perspective. And this is what, this is what an autoimmune situation is. Okay. It's like the immune system is now turning on itself because it has to survive. It's not getting its basic needs met. So that's when, you know, food sensitivities turn into environmental allergies and, you know, like hair loss and all these things. And so malfunction, 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 because dis-ease just means a body that's not at ease. Malfunction now creates a chronic situation and something that's chronic doesn't have space or a break to reinvent, readjust, repopulate, re reboot, heal. There's no space to heal. There's no, there's no abundance of nutrients, minerals, and the lack of consciousness because the body is uncomfortable to be in is literally going to become like, you know, an army on an island that's literally just going to start devouring itself and everything in its way just to survive its own existence. And it becomes very parasitic, which means there's a host and, you know, kind of situation. And this is when you'll notice that the ego gets very, um, very victim-y and then flips to perpetrator. Okay. Like, please help me. Please help me. You can help me. You know, you're just like, whoa, as a practitioner, it's like scary. Who's in there? You know, how many of you? So this is important for you to be aware of before. See, none of you should just be like, I've got my muscle testing. I've got my QHHT. You guys, you're, you're going to require a bigger toolbox of awareness to be able to look at someone's past, present, future behavior, because nobody gets in a situation that is requiring an outside healer if it hasn't been abandoned. Like it's, it's like what happens with abandoned buildings, guys, there's squatters, there's graffiti, you know, the sinks are taken out. It's like, this is what you're kind of dealing with when you get a body in your office. And do you really think that the squatter is that's back there that's living off the rats in the corner are going to tell you the truth when you muscle test the body because the inner child's going to be like, uh, yeah, I don't like playing. I don't like sugar. I'm allergic, you know? So again, you have to take into consideration this entire system that's being hacked and overridden by the, the brain's inability to deal with its own stressful environment. Okay, this is why you guys as practitioners, you, you just sometimes you'll become 
you'll become the bad guy all of a sudden. You know, if things are not fast enough, if if solutions are not quick enough, if people are not healing quick enough, it's like, it must be your fault. I paid you a lot of money and where's my results, right? And so it's like, you've got to understand that you as a practitioner cannot have your, um, your doubts in or your your understanding in one area of your modalities you've got to take into consideration that you're dealing with most of the time a very empathic soul with a very narcissistic sociopathic uh egoic mind and body at times where that is literally going to turn on you right and you do not want to second guess yourself and the only time you guys second guess yourself is you put all your eggs in one basket. Like it's got to work. QHA has got to work. Muscle time got to work. Like you're using it as one tool. Like I become like a contractor at my house. So it's like, okay, what do I going to need? Try this. Doesn't work. Try this. Doesn't work. Your job is a scientist. Reach, research and, and, and witness. Okay. Like this person is, is literally can't manifest money. And when I muscle test them, they say they can, or that they're allergic to sugar, right? No, like you see, so it's like, you are going to have to kind of formulate, not through a judgment, but a discernment, uh, a discernment of, of understanding someone as a whole being that is in desperate, which means lack and starving, acute, which means now, right? Pain, disease, illness. This is 911. So, as a practitioner, this is not a doctor family visit. Let me put my stethoscope on. This is an ER room. Okay, very different. Now, if this person is just like, hey, am I sensitive to fish? Great. Okay, get them the backstory about what happens when they eat fish. When was the first time they ate fish? you know, what was going on in their life, spend 20 minutes, build the rapport because you're going to see vibrationally that it's not fish that they're allergic to. It's that dad abandoned her at the restaurant. She ordered fish and this didn't even eat the fish. The smell said, now we can't have fish because this means daddy leaves because it's, it's a circular experience. So you're going to need to have more, which is, is like doctors don't ask questions like, oh, okay, well, let's do this lab test. Oh, yep. You've got cancer. Like, wait, what? You know? So it's like, don't, don't put all your eggs in one basket. I always say, whether you're doing QHHT or advanced quantum healing, or you're doing, you know, working on getting someone some more money, you, you got to kind of get a little bit of the backstory of when did it first start you know is it did it you know start the whole time how do they deal with stress what are their cravings because again it's like they will when you're in their presence they're gonna bleh, they're gonna tell you everything which is beautiful because they know you're gonna help them but there is this weird space between victim and perpetrator in healing that I'm really glad we're having this conversation right now that not a lot of practitioners really understand. And I know you can handle this where they say yes to your help. They pay you money. They come into your office. They, they get on, they get on the phone with you, right? They give you their arm to metal muscle tests. Right. And in the same moment, like this vulnerability, right? That act of courage to, to say, please, someone help me. Okay. I'm here. I paid the money. You have to understand that there is also on the other side of that, the desire to not be well, to not let you in because everyone who has said they're going to heal them has hurt them. You know, they've been rejected by people that were empathic. They've been taken from, stolen from, lied to, right? And so now in that vulnerable state of body, you're looking at that, you're looking at that quantum healing or that quantum physics experiment, right? Where the ball is going in the direction of the holes, creating a formula when it's being witnessed. Now, when it's not being witnessed, those particles are wherever else they want to be, 
They're only doing what they're told when you're watching. Right. And it was kind of like the other day in quantum Fis F fitness when I said, everybody hold out the cup. And I loved your representation of I'm not letting this cup go if it kills me. Right. It's just like people are watching, you know, and I'm watching and therefore I'm going to do my best. Right. So when you find yourself in a very vulnerable situation where the, the being who has said yes to the services and paid the money is not always the being you're going to get in the whole session. So they might say yes and then, you know, run away on the day of the marriage, right? Or, or then say, I, I can't, I can't. I can't do this. I get too much attention from healing or from being sick or, or my food sensitivities keep my weight down because then I don't eat gluten or my food sensitivities keep me from having to say yes to social situations. And I'm just not ready to like have to say yes to my life yet. You know, because it's like, it's just like at any moment, I always tell you guys, it's like you get to the finish line and then they change your mind because it's like, I, I, I can't do it. I can do it. So in that moment, are you getting a real truth? So here is a trick. Jules, we probably should put this whole Q&A in um, quantum fitness because it's awesome. Good question. Here's a trick. Okay. So what you could do before muscle testing to get, you know, the warden, the manipulator, the criminal mind, the liar, the one wearing a mask, the starving one, the, the lack one, the no freedom one out of the equation so that the inner child can be like, you know what? My mom doesn't let me sleep. You know, get the child to be able to pull on the muscle strings of the body without the warden, right? Is frequency. Ah! So whether you have your Healy, or all you have accessible to you is, is some frequency sounds on YouTube, I would say, and I do this before my QHHT sessions too, is I would put everybody into 15 minutes, no less than theta. Theta, okay? 15 minutes of theta, whether they like it or not, it's the meditation. They're going to, through the power of override, the ego is going to be kind of cracked out like, yeah, man, I don't care whether we stay or go. Like there's no danger at hand. There's just choice and flow. And this will get ego out of your way to do between a three and five minute muscle testing. And I'm going to tell you, that's all you've got. It's like you got to get the guard dog out of the way. Because especially if this is like their first investment in healing or this is their first um their first time trusting you know you have to understand that what does it mean that you're a man what does it mean that you're you know that that you know it's like there could be so many little ptsd things that the reason why they're attracted to you as a practitioner is because they remind you of some of their pain i mean this is why we're attracted to our twin flames you know i have literally had people say i can't work with you you remind me of my other therapist i'm like really like okay you know it's like i mean this was 10 years ago but you know i've gone through every ounce of watching the 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 very needed wounded empath arrive at my office and have to deal with the narcissist that shuts the door so i just want you because you seem a little bit like doubtful and you're not like confident i want you to have everything in your toolbox to breed confidence and secure that you are strapping down that client to get the truth. Because I will tell you that I have, and, and this is actually when I learned this, I didn't learn this in quantum fitness. When I had my uh, wellness center back in 2014, I worked with some really amazing practitioners. I mean, they just came out of the woodwork. You'd be surprised what people are capable of. And I had this one gal and she was just like, she was like a, um, she was like a, outward Christian. She was really big in her church, but her secret life was a advanced quantum kinesiologist. Whew. She knew everything that body was saying. And she was the one who said, but muscle testing is lying, especially if it's going to get them what they want. Right. And what they want sometimes is to not be well. So this, is, and she did not tell me about theta, what she would do 
where she would muscle test and she would trigger the body through with tuning forks to get it distracted. Kind of like, you know, when you're getting blood and they say, oh, look over here, squeeze this, right? In quantum fitness, we've got these things. So it's like, because this, well, while we're do, doing this, they'll be like, oh, pretty, smells good. Oh, oh, oh. Muscle testing work, you know? So it's distracting the warden long enough to break out and give you the truth, like a message in a bottle, right? And this is all going to depend on how heavy the hold of the fight flight mechanism, how powerful the mind has become with, with all of the strength of adrenaline over the years. Okay. So this will be helpful either 15 minutes of theta or find a way to distract him. Now, my voice happens to be very hypnotic and I've been doing this for so long. So this is why I can do virtual sessions. No problem because I can see the narcissist start to come out and then I, I, Look at the shiny ball, you know. So I I have a way to 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 get my clients to actually like thrive eventually with me, and and this is this is how I do it. But I'm going to tell you that it, it'll build confidence, it'll build your toolbox, it'll build your awareness because you're going to be studying that you're not always getting what you see or the reaction that is true. But I do not want you to second guess your ability as a healer, a coach. I just don't, I don't want you to, you know, um, not have as many, I want you to be one step ahead because you know that me, myself and I, you don't want to take anything at face value. This is what doctors do and why it screws everything up. Oh, your, th your, your wrist is hurting. Let's cut your wrist. You know, it's like your wrist is connected to your neck. You know, so it's like we want to make sure that we're looking at someone as a whole system and we're anticipating that if they're in that bad of condition, they probably have a warden narcissist sociopath behind the curtain, right? Just because they came to get help does not mean they actually want help. Sometimes they want attention. Sometimes they want someone to take the pain away. Sometimes they just want, they want the help. They want the healing, but they're not ready to experience what the byproduct of that is. Like, I want the podcast, but I don't want to be attacked for what I say. I want the book, but I don't want to be judged for my writing. You see? So it's like they want you and they want the wellness, but they're not necessarily ready for the vulnerability and courage it's going to require to have a new life when you're done. You've got to take that into consideration that that's what you're dealing with. Okay. And if you do, if you take that in consideration and, and not judge people, but be aware that this is how humans are right now is it helps you become very neutral. Like you got this in your toolbox. You got this in your toolbox. Oh, this person's really unhealthy. We're going to 15 minutes of theta, you know, eight, if they can't handle 15, right? You're going to have some sort of distractions in there. It's like, I mean, why do you think doctors that, that were pediatricians have toys in their room? Because the child is fixated on the toy. Can I have this toy? Can I have this toy? Can I give you a shot? Sure. Right. <laughs> but if there's no toys, it's like, you have to be aware that you're dealing with a very wounded, broken child and a sociopathic parent behind the door. If the, tr if the person is very ill, if the person is just like, Hey, I'm great. I'm just like this one little tweak. I'm so ready. You know, let's do this. You're probably going to get an accurate muscle response, but anything deeper than that, you're going to want to distract the addiction that is going to move the needle or the pendulum or create a muscle reaction that isn't in your best interest to follow the navigation of. So great question. I'm so glad you asked. Okay, let's go. Next one. All right. Okay, well, let's see. Tika, there we are. All right, next question. Um, we've got Aya. So hello, Jess. What is the most effective way to get deeply hidden deposits of grief in the body? I have gotten through so many layers of grief in the past year, but I still feel like there is more hidden. So deeply within me and out of my reach, I use my reality as a trigger to get to it, but I don't experience massive release when processing it. It's more like a dull, toxic, emotional fog that slowly evaporates from the body and energy field. Do I just wait for it to thaw slowly and deal with it that way? If there are no tears, am I still releasing it successfully? 
I just want to dig it out of me once and for good. Thank you. God, so perfect questions for quantum fitness. So you guys are all going to be in your, and you're in that class. I, I'm pretty sure you are, Aya. Um, if you're in quantum fitness is um, grief, quantum grief release. Because this is where we are as humans. We are getting into that sediment space of like that last like layer that is almost like it, you know, when you're like, I do this with my son. Like, it's like, you know, when the, the hamburger has been like sitting with the bread too long and then the cheese becomes the bread, right? It's like, oh man, I just wanted the cheese. I didn't want the bread or I just wanted the bread, not the cheese. But it's like, they've become each other. So this last layer of grief is literally like the cheese melting in the bread. And, and you're, if you pull off the cheese, you're going to get bread. And if you pull off the bread, you're going to get cheese. So it's so inside of and 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 mixed with the it's attached literally to the subatomic structure of the physical being that the the only real way so good the only real way to get every ounce of grief out is to make something new with it repurpose it because let's be honest i see this all the time on instagram and i'm just like oh I feel it and I release it. I feel it and I release it. Where? Where are you putting it? Energy doesn't die, change its form. So what is it changing into? Please tell me. What is all of your work that you're releasing? What is it becoming? What? When you purge grief, which is homeless love. This is important. Homeless love. When you purge grief, what are you doing with the homeless love? Well, I'm getting it out of my body. Where is it going? Where is it going? <laughs> it's like keeping your enemies close to you, right? Like, wait, where did it go? I mean, have you ever broken up with someone and then worried that they were going to stalk you? Have you ever like quit a job, but then all of a sudden they're like talking behind your back? Did you feel it and release it? And this is like one of my big, this was my biggest, this was my biggest shift in quantum fitness because I knew that all weight is attached to loss. If I'm waiting for something, uh, it's actually coming from PTSD of loss in the past. If I'm waiting, it's loss, right? And anticipation of more loss, okay? It's funny. It's like, I need to lose weight, right? It's like, I, I need to like, lose this. It's interesting. It's all catch 22. So let's look at grief. Because when I really started to get into my deep, 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 deep grief, I did the same thing that we all do. It's like, oh, feel it and let it go. I was like, wait a second. I have always been attacked more when my back was turned right? Then when I was looking at something, when I was carrying something, like at least if I had my grief right here, I knew where it was. And you're like, well, grief's not mean. How do you know? It's homeless love. So if, if love is what you are, what is the absence of it? <laughs> the scary thing you send to your bed, right? Like, it's like, it may, you may feel like it's like tears and sadness and I lost my mom or you know, I can't touch my grandma. No, 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 no. There, th there is a lot more to grief. Grief is at the lowest point of a sediment level right before the second and first dimension. It's parasitic. It's looking for a host. You get rid of it. Where's it going? Right? It's like a cockroach. You can't kill it. All right. It's like, it's going to breed while you're killing it. Like, so you, it's just like our egos. We cannot kill our ego, get rid of our ego. We have to do something with it. So this was where these came from. Okay. Because what I was realizing is, is when I would do my, you guys, I've had, yeah, I've lost everything. I've lost parents. I've lost hope. I've lost money. I've lost time. I've lost my, you know, pride of, you know, I've lost everything that it could have been except a child in this physical reality. I have lost probably 10 different ways sideways. Okay. And I have counseled people who have left children, lost children. So I've empathetically gone through those experiences as well. And I have had to go through my own grief of my kids because that was where spirit took me in the early years. So I wouldn't have any fear, blah, 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 blah. But 
But it wasn't until this year that I started to get to that bread and cheese level, right? Where it was like, okay, well, if I pull this grief off, like I, I wreck the whole thing, right? So, and what do I do with it, right? Because I'm afraid, you know, my stress response system has always been, you know, always, you know, friend your enemy and keep them close to you and, you know, know where everybody is at all times. I mean, this is literally the way my body was designed at a very young age to be hyper aware of wobbles and, triggers, right? So what I realized is that when I would feel it and let it go, because energy doesn't die, it changes form. And if I let it go away from my body, is there light to catch it if I just abandoned and rejected it? Hmm. Like, what is abandoned and rejectment? Well, what creates homeless love? Abandonment. So if I cry myself to sleep and I feel lighter, because again, you're going to feel lighter when you speak your truth, when you purge your grief, when you, you know, lose weight, like you're going to feel lighter for a while, right? So imagine that grief is a boomerang, okay? And it is attached to you karmically, maybe through your DNA, through whatever, and you go through a grief release program, right? That is about feel it, let it go, right? And you're thinking you're transcending it. Well, what is the definition of transcending, right? It's the same as alchemy, right? You're, you're going to have to do something different with this grief if you actually don't want to be haunted, interesting, because it becomes a ghost, of your pain, a residue, right? So, okay, if I take a solid piece of ice, right? This is my, my daddy left me. I can feel it. I can touch it. I, I look in the mirror. I see my dad's eyes, blah, blah, blah. True story. Okay, he left me. Two years old. Got it. That's my story. There's a big solid ball of ice around my heart. So I go on my spiritual journey, right? And they say, you got daddy issues, girl. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I can't keep a relationship, right? Two failed marriages. So I'm like, okay, time to get the grief that's weighing me down and making me attracted to more pain, pleasure, cir circumstances. Let me find this grief, this ball of ice. It should be pretty easy because it's hidden in every masculine, you know, relationship I have. I should be able to find it. So I find it pretty easily. Whoa, there it is. Right? Good. Okay. I have it. Now what? Well, we know that if we're going to transcend something, it has to first become water, tears, sweat. It has to break down into a liquid, right? Emotion, energy in motion. This needs to become liquid. And then in order for it to then not be searching to take a shape of something else because it's going to move. And here's the thing. If it's moving, it'll take the shape of whatever it bumps up against. So if it, it flows into a cup, it's going to become a cup. Great. If it flows over here, great, 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 great. It's still going to be grief. It's still going to be my dad left me when I was two, but now it's the water of my dad left. It's the rushing river of that. And it's becoming whatever it bumps into, solid form of it. So it actually gets scarier now because now it's not in the shape of my daddy left me. Now it's in the shape of I'm following my own river and it's in the shape of, you know, a business partner that happens to be a man that promises me the world. Interesting. So this turns into a wallet, water, and then the more I believe in it, it becomes a solid. So it shape shifts because grief is sediment, rock. It's, it's material of creation itself, which means that if you break it up, you can really just with, with, you know, some glue, put it all back together in a different shape. Like you can break down a rock and you can build whatever you want out of it because it is a solid mass and this is going to turn into water. Now, we would say, okay, now once it's a solid, we got to turn it into a steam because a steam is going to be particles. 
of the universe, right? It's going to mix back in with the field of potential. But if I extracted grief out of my body and it's very painful because it's around survival and loss and humiliation and guilt and shame, then the fibers of particles that are in the, 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 the atomic structure of the, what I just created steam through transcendence is now going to be drops of an ocean scattered all around my life. <laughs> this is why I struggled. So I didn't realize I was doing this because of grief release, grief release. So I'm now creating particles that are literally invisible, at least with the water, you could see it, right? And feel it and you're aware of it and it hurt. But then once it becomes particles, it's like, whoo, it's gone. Well, they say that the energy of haunting or ghost like energy is something that is the remembrance of grief. So now we get grief out of our body, but now we have remembrance of grief following us around like a freaking dark cloud. So, solution. So many solutions today. Okay. Unfortunately, I have gone through all of this, so I've done this work for you. So physical representation of a process of grief is not complete with letting it go. Where is it going? Okay. So just like if you saw a spider in your room, right? And you took your eyes off of it. Did you let it go? <laughs> now, where is it? Okay. So because it's the fragmented of pain, it's a fragment of pain. So pain does not dissolve. Death does not resolve until it becomes life. So you have to actually repurpose grief. Woohoo! Now you understand quantum fitness. So we are going to repurpose grief, shame, guilt, humiliation, and resentment. And that will bring you to a new relationship with fear that is not fearful. And now you're free. So your job is to repurpose it. Now I can't spend the whole rest of this hour telling you how to do that because quantum fitness will show you probably about 15 or 20 different ways to repurpose it because there's not just one way. And you guys will then event, event and create many, many more ways to repurpose grief and your lower frequencies. Because if you do not turn something dead into something alive, then it's going to find you as a host eventually. Like, I thought I cleared this. I thought I cleared this. I thought I cleared this. I lost the weight, but now I have a brain aneurysm. You know, I thought I, I got rich, but I, I was abandoned. Because again, just like any grief, it will haunt you and then redirect. And because your body has not made something new with your pain, it will come back as its original blueprint. The bread and the cheese, right? What you want to do is you want to smash that bread and cheese all up together because it's not getting away from each other and make some meatballs out of it or something. Okay. Repurpose it. So I'm going to show you how to do that in quantum fitness. Okay. Here we go. Uh, next question. Lee says, Hey Jess, could you give us some advice to incarnate each day more to be able to be more in our body and be more human? I would love to find the practical balance of our two energies. It's magic. I feel that being human leads me to being in 3D when I judge or use gossip to communicate or become a victim. I would love to transform this belief system. I would love to feel more life all over. Okay. Well, you're in the right class, girlfriend. It's all about the brain and the body. So first of all, let me give you some quick helpful hints and this will really help you because you are a practitioner. Okay. So the first mistake that we're making on the spiritual journey is that we're setting intentions. Not that we're setting intentions, but the intentions that we're making, you know, we go to sleep, we tell the universe what we want. We wake up, you know, we, we do our I am's, you know, today's intention is I am abundant. I am love. I am kindness. I am graceful, right? I am supported, right? And then, you know, and then your body's like, it's like the muscle testing. <laughs> we'll see, right? Now, look at that command. Because when you ask, it's given. And the universe only knows yes, okay? So let's look at what our body is abundant in. I am abundant. Ego's like, check. I am abundant 
in problems, in stress, in lack of money, in, you know, family issues, not you personally, but just in general, these are human things, right? I am free. Great. Brain's like, what are we free to do? Stir up problems. We're free to gossip because we have no power. So it's interesting when we do affirmations over a, a broken, disassociated me, myself, and I, we're actually empowering our negative belief systems. And we don't realize we're doing this because we are that powerful. That when you say, I am free, I am love, I am hope, your brain is like, okay. So I need to demonstrate what we are free to do, which is what? What are you allowed to do in your life? Well, first of all, look at where you're trapped. Okay. Ugh. So I'm free to be more trapped. What is your right now abundance? What are you abundant in? Time, relationships, health, money. Or are you abundant in lack of time, relationships, health, and money? So throw the affirmations away. <laughs> We're done with the spiritual journey. We're getting real, right? We're becoming realistic in our hallucination of our own imagination of ourselves. We're looking at the conclusion, not the desire. Look at what you got. Well, I'm not free, I'm not safe, I'm not seen, I'm not heard. So I'm not going to affirm that I am because that's just going to make me spiritually bypass and crave meditation later and want to run away from a family. So how about if I actually say, um, I'm going to read it again, to be 100% human, wake up, realize what dream you're in. Crap, this one again. Darn it. I thought I was done. Well, here we are. These are my kids. This is my husband. This is my money. This is my body. Good morning. I see you. We're all here. This is the manure that we're all sitting in. Great. Right? Today, I affirm to be more aware of my own patterns and behaviors that make me interact with my PTSD instead of transcend it. This is my affirmation. Allow me, support me, hear me, help me become more aware of my own patterns that are generating this virtual reality. Because if you are nothing but the projector playing the film, shining the light onto the screen of the reality that you have, if you wake up in the morning and affirm abundance, it's going to find where you are abundant in your story and project it. What if you're abundant in pain? Your, your brain's not like, your brain is autistic when it's in separation of itself. It's defragmented, it's emotional, and it's rational. There is no like, wait, no, I didn't mean it that way. You know, when you say, I see how you feel, an autistic child would not understand that because what? But I do because empathic, there is a connection that helps us understand the language behind that. Okay. But your brain that has been in survival for its whole life and desiring thriving with tastes and, and slight manifestations of thrive are literally living in two different apartments, right? And the only way that you're going to really be able to get into the channel of your abundance of higher vibrational abundance instead of your lower vibrational abundance, because you guys realize that you have higher vibrational abundance and you have lower when they say abundance is your birthright. Well, what if you come from a long line of poor people? Is that your birthright? Right. So make sure that you're, you're affirming to being a witness to your own belief systems that is projecting a reality that you don't like. Do not affirm the universe to spiritually bypass for you because it's going to generate more of what you're hiding so that you can see it. This is why I tell people, don't over-process. Okay? Do not over-process because when you over-process, you uproot too much pain too quickly. You uproot too much grief too quickly. You uproot too much old stuff. You're not, you put it there because you couldn't handle it. So just because you're feeling good right now doesn't mean you can handle all of it. First, it's going to steal your joy. 
Secondly, it's going to be like, man, here I am in the mirror again. Nothing ever works out for me. And this is when we get trapped. So your affirmation is basically what quantum fitness class was about today was actually becoming aware of your circular patterns, things that you do every day, right? To become who you say you are, right? This is not a 911 call to the universe. Help me be abundant. This is allow and show me where I am in the way of my own abundance uh, and show me where I am the problem. Show me where I am, you know, um, holding myself back. Affirm to see those things without judgment because that's going to give you the space, the theta brainwave, the alpha brainwave to then make a choice and then act it out to then get a different circumstance because the universe is like, you have to meet me halfway. I will always say yes to your pain or your abundance or your freedom, but you're going to have to meet me halfway. And you sure as hell are meeting halfway when it comes to the negative abundance, more than halfway. Like, let's think about it. You say that you get caught up in 3D and gossip. Okay. Now, would you say that an angel would gossip? No, right? A, an angel is going to find beauty and, and perfection in anyone. It's like the Christ consciousness. It's like there's always a wounded child underneath. Everybody's doing the best that they can. Everybody, just like in, in Dermot's situation, you know, there was no judgment in their clientele. It was just, it is what it is. It's an isness. It's an awareness of truth, right? It just, they're not bad. They're not good. They're just, they're surviving. Okay. So I have that. I had this lady who came to me and she was very like another country, um, a very like repressed country. And she um, was a politician. Um, she also wanted to hope, open a healing center and she also went to a practitioner and got her Kundalini blown wide open. So she was like all over the place and she was like, she's so much beautiful talent and potential everywhere. Um, but she kept affirming for more healing and more, more, uh, more, more Kundalini because she kept thinking that the more healed she became or the more like energy she could download or the more she could channel was going to fix her loss of her mother, the cancer she had in her body, all these things. And I'm like, you're just, you're becoming, you're over processing, which means that when you over process, you're going to uproot pain very, very quickly. Right. And you think that that's going to help you go faster and it actually helps you go slower. So it's just like a gardener, like there, there is a process when you're harvesting, when you're germinating, when you're feeding, it's like, it's not about not being able to like be patient because there's always something to do, practice, prepare, play, but there isn't about just it. You cannot go from here to here when you're dealing with four levels of consciousness that have been in separation for a really long time. You realize the super consciousness is going to now be able to send a message to the unconscious to uproot something. And this is, this needs to be done in, in, in like seasons. Right. And if we would allow it to run its course, it, we would actually be finished by now. But we are in resistance. We're forced hurry, like hurry up, which creates more duress, more resistance, more stress, more fight or flight, more doubt, more questions because I just felt so great. And now I'm contracting. I was expanding and I, I thought that was love and he left me. And then we're left confused. Right. So. There you go. So what I'm saying is, is, is what you want to do is awake in the acceptance of your situation and then have the courage. If you look at your master of love frequencies, right? You wake up, you're like sitting in your loss, right? You don't have the house you want. You don't have the things you want. You are in your loss. Accept it. These are my kids. This is everything. There's good things, but you're also accepting the things that are not the way you want them to. Great. Today, I would like the courage the vulnerability, the awareness to show up as a co-creator of my true desires instead of a co-creator of my story. Because you're showing up and you're trying your best, you're affirming, then you're showing up eventually halfway through as a, you know, a participant in your story versus, you know, someone who can rewrite code. Okay. And we're obviously going to dive way into that in quantum fitness. So don't worry, you're going to get lots more tools. 
Okay, Heike says, hi, Jess. I had a dream last night that I had big warts moles on my behind that I concluded was cancer. Ooh. And I had to go to the hospital. I was, I always dream a lot, but this is the first time I had a dream in this way about my body. Awesome. I started quantum fitness and it triggered a lot in my system. So analytical mind wants to make sure, make that correlation. Could you shine some light on the situation? Thank you. So every time you're going to get a story in your dream state, it's actually a feeling. So there will be a metaphor, right? So okay, I'm going to take three storyline um, buzz points from your dream. And I'm going to give you the feeling. Now, this is kind of like muscle testing. It's like, again, it's like the muscles are, it's like code, right? It's like code. It's like braille. It's like, you know, binary, right? So again, when the body is trying to communicate to you through um, muscle testing or muscle testing or response or hypnosis or dreams, you, you never can be too analytical with your understanding because again, the brain does not speak only analytics. It's speaking a, a coherency of all four levels of your consciousness, super conscious, conscious, subconscious, unconscious. And your job is to find the common denominator of the expression. So it's an expression. So if you look at a big art piece and it's like, what is that? It's an expression. You don't look at each color. So first of all, warts. In our society, what would having a bunch of warts feel like? Well, it could be humiliating. You could feel disgusting. You could feel like you need to hide. You could feel like you're being judged. You could feel um, unworthy. You could feel gross. You could f see the see how it's all connected to around the same feeling. Now, let's look at your behind. Why not? It's cute. It's, it's something that we usually tend to cover up. So now we're hiding in two ways, disgust and private parts. Okay. Or, or something that, you know, is, is not like, is not necessarily like, um, something that we're, we're trying to like show everybody unless it's been one of your like best aspects. And then you would feel disgusting in your best, best aspect, but it usually is something that we would, would consider, um, a private place. So disgusted in my private space, right? Private mind, private this. I'm disgusted within, right? Now, what is cancer? Cancer is anger, baby. Very angry. Disgusted, hiding, anger. Your body is telling you something right there. Yes, quantum fitness, you guys are all getting the how to speak body. And we are taking in consideration the sociopathic lie factor. So don't worry. Dreams are a way, though, that I will tell you that they are SOSing you. If you remember your dream, like even if it's just symbolism or you wake up with like a feeling, grab it. Don't fixate and obsess. Just be like, this kind of feels like I'm running out of time or I'm not good enough. Great. This is what unconscious my body feels like while I'm, you know, finally living this job I love. My body still feels like that. So what it's saying is, is this is still present, even though this is going really good. And I'm just letting you know that it's bubbling because if it comes up to a dream, it takes a lot of hormonal sequences in order to get a picture in your brain while you're unconscious, your brain, your body's working very overtime to project an image that actually sticks with you. So if you actually get something again, Grab the feeling associated with each part because again, brain is compartmentalized when it is unwell. So you got to like, like it's like playing charades, right? So, okay. This, this, um, warts discussed. Okay. Behind private. Okay. Boom. And then you're going to put it all together and like, what is this expression? Have I felt like this? Has anybody made me feel like this? Is, am I hiding this from myself? Now you're asking questions. Okay. As soon as you start to ask questions, well, now you're activating super consciousness and subconscious. Where is it stored? What do I have access to? Creator. Okay. All right. So there we go with that. Exactly one hour. Perfect. Got some good time there. Um, 
we'll definitely put this Q and a just in our quantum fitness class. Hope you guys don't mind. Um, I'm not going to show your picture or anything if you're not in that class for future use, but great, great questions um, and decent answers for things that have been coming up anyways. So it's like, again, everything is in divine order with you guys, with us, with now. We're in this last home stretch of the year. And this is when you literally have unpacked boxes everywhere of all your crap. And it's not feel it and let it go. It's it's do something with it and 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 become something from it because there isn't anything in this world that you can let go of except love that won't come back to you somehow not necessarily in a bad way but it's a boomerang it's like this is yours it's coming back woohoo right it's going to come back in a new form but and you have released a lot of it, right? But there's still cheese on that bread. There's still cheese on that bread. So you have to anticipate that you are not just, that wound is gone. This story is over. That pattern is complete. There might be layers. And what I'm seeing now is how to biohack that through alchemy. All right. That's what we're going to do. Okay, guys, I will see you soon. Have a fantastic rest of the day. And hopefully you get an opportunity to watch the two-hour class that I put in Quantum Fitness plus a whole crap ton of worksheets. Well, not worksheets, but more of like awareness sheets. You know, things to make you go, hmm, or ah, or oh, or what. Okay. All right.